Michael has a Nikon V1, like I have. I'm using it to shoot this video right now. It's a great camera, but Michael is looking for a bit higher quality and more control of depth of field. He used to have a D200 with a 24 to 85 lens, so he knows the power of an excellent DSLR. His primary goal for his next DSLR is to take photos of his son at school functions. He's looking at the D600, and who wouldn't? It's a great camera. But the D600 and lenses that do it justice come at a premium. A premium that Michael can't take on all at once. Michael sees the lenses as the most important part of the equation. Great thinking, by the way and is looking for a temporary body that would work well with lenses designed for the FX D600. Something else on Michael's mind is the FT1 adapter for the V1, which lets you use Nikon F mount lenses on the V1. Michael, this is a great question, and it boils down to a question faced by many. With the money that I have to spend right now, should I spend on a body? or lenses. Michael is very smart to look at the lenses as the primary purchase, with the goal of a top FX body later on. School functions tell me one thing, low light photography, and maybe the need for a decent telephoto. A lot of school functions take place in dimly lit auditoriums, and often you can't get as close to the action as you'd like. First, let's talk lenses, then we'll talk about a camera body strategy. Now, I do enjoy using the F-mount lenses with my V1. I actually am right now. I have the 35 millimeter on my V1 right now, uh, but it's not designed specifically for them. So there are limitations. Most Nikon lenses will work with the FT1, but they can't use continuous focus or even different focus areas. Also, with VR lenses, the VR seems to run continuously, which can't be good for battery life. One interesting thing about the FT1 adapter, though, is that due to the crop factor of the CX sensor on the V1, a lens like this 85mm f1.8 will give you a field of view similar to how a lens over 200mm would look on a full frame with the ability to shoot at f1.8. That's pretty tempting but the compromises kill it for me as a full-time system. Also, the FT1 adapter costs almost $200, which takes budget away from that temporary body that you're looking for. For lenses, the killer lens for indoor and outdoor events when you're not very close is this 70-200 f2.8. This first generation model sells for about $1,400, while the newer version sells for a thousand more. For outdoor photography, where the f2.8 capability isn't needed, there's a less expensive FX variable aperture zoom with a range from 70 to 300 millimeters. I wouldn't use the 70 to 300 indoors in less than ideal conditions, but outdoors, it works very well. When you're closer to the action and want high quality, especially with an eye toward the D600, I really like prime lenses. Here I have three, which I use all the time. This older 24 millimeter for wide angle shots, the 50 millimeter for a normal perspective, and 85 millimeters for portraits or when you want to get a bit closer to the action. The 24 millimeter and 85 millimeter are under $500. The 50 millimeter goes for about $279. Whether you're shooting in low light or want razor sharp images, primes are the champions. Finally, Michael is looking for a body to put these on. Older used bodies always cost less than new bodies. But when I hear that Michael wants to shoot school functions, I'm also thinking that he needs reasonable high ISO capabilities. That disqualifies older bodies like the D50, D70, and D80. The D3100 sells for a few hundred dollars, kit lens included, and you might be able to find a screaming deal on a used one. For a bit more, you can consider another intriguing possibility, the D90. It's still sold as a new camera by various retailers. It has great performance, and it has held its value extremely well. In fact, looking at used prices for the D90, the price has fallen very little in the past couple years. And like I said, you can also get it new for only $600. If I were in your shoes, I'd go for the D3100 and wouldn't look back. But the D90, it does have a lot going for it too. Okay, let me come up with a concise answer. But remember, this is just one Snapchick's opinion. I'd go for a used D3100 and maybe start with this 85 millimeter lens in addition to the D3100's 18 to 55 kit lens. The 85 millimeter will get you relatively close to the action due to the DX crop factor of the D3100 and it will deliver very strong low light capability. When you do go for that FX body like the D600, the 85 millimeter is a fantastic portrait lens. When you sell that D3100 and kit lens, 
Then you'll probably have enough money from the sale to go towards a 50 millimeter lens or something wider like the 24 millimeters. Good luck, Michael, and thanks for the great question. And definitely keep us updated on what you decide.